Daniel here for Tabletop for One and my top 10 list of games that exceeded my expectations. And I thank you for joining me tonight. Now, I tend to research a lot of games and already have expectations about games. And usually my expectations are met. They might be ex exceeded slightly, but never enough to really surprise me, at least in most cases. <laughs> but there have been some games where I picked them up either on clearance or on a whim or sometimes to fill out a shopping cart to get free shipping or something like that. And so I picked up those games and I thought, you know, I'll give it a try. I've heard some good things about the games, but I just didn't have any really high expectations about them. And so in this list, I have 10 of those games that really exceeded my expectations, gave me a better solo gaming experience than I expected. All right, so we're gonna jump right in at number 10, and that is Isle of Trains All Aboard. Now, Isle of Trains was actually a Kickstarter that I backed, and the only reason why I backed this game, well, two reasons, all right? First, train theme. I, I love train games. Train theme is uh, one of my favorite themes for board games. But I backed it because I, I love his art and I think he did a fantastic job with this game. So that was the only reason why I backed the, the game. Like I didn't even really look into the gameplay or you know figure out if this was a game that I was gonna like. So I backed it and then I played the game and I loved it. I love the fact that you use cards as currency. I love the, the train theme. I love kind of the engine building that goes along with it. I love the fact that they include a whole bunch of solo scenarios and goals to beat those scenarios. And so this provides a really fantastic solo experience. And on top of that, it's like super cheap right now. I think I saw it on Card Hoss for like 20 bucks. And so that is a great deal. I know it's a small box game anyways, but there's a lot of game in this box. And for 20 bucks, it's quite a good deal. So yeah, Isle of Trains all aboard really exceeded my expectations. I was really happy about that and I uh, enjoy this game to this day. And so the next one I picked up by my local game store. Gabby's Olympic Cards and Comics is the best game store I've ever been to. I love that place. I love the staff there. I love Gabby. She's just an amazing woman and she runs such a great business. So <laughs> just putting that out there, they're just amazing people. But I picked this up during one of their, like I think it was one of the May the 4th sales. It was one of their sales where they put out some board games on clearance. And so I picked this one up. It's called Stellar Leap. So number nine is Stellar Stellar Leap, and Stellar Leap is designed by Carla Kopp, and it's published by Weird Giraffe Games, and it's just a fantastic solo game. I, I was actually surprised by it. I think I got it for like 20 bucks, and I got the expansion with it for another, I don't know, five or 10 bucks or something like that. But this game plays one to five players, but it is a sci-fi kind of uh, resource management, exploration game, a little bit of engine building, a lot of really good things. It has really good AI that works with it. It's really good. I love this game. I, I don't know what it is. I, I just, I was totally surprised by this game. Now it's not like a 10 out of 10 game or game of the year. You know, this would be like a solid eight out of 10. But it's, you know, it's really good. And I, I think part of that is the fact that I got it so cheap, you know, perhaps with, uh, you know, buying something so inexpensively or expectations are already low to begin with. But I don't know. I was really surprised by it. And it's been such a great game to play and I highly recommend it. All right, and so I guess I'm just going on with this whole getting things on clearance theme because next up is another game I got on clearance and this was at uh, Barnes & Noble during their after Christmas you know, sale and this is Garinto. Now, Garinto is an abstract game, and I happen to really love abstract games. I, I don't know what it is. I, I think it's just the focus on mechanics over the theme and just how clean it can be. Now, Garinto is just this fantastic game where you're drafting tiles from a board, and the tile that you draft, it determines which tiles you get around it. And it's really interesting. And you're gonna stack these tiles in your little play area, and you're gonna score based off of how you stack those tiles. It's just a great game and it comes with a really good AI. It's a really challenging AI too and it's just really a lot of fun. And the components are great. It's got these stacking tiles. Sometimes they stick together, so do keep that in mind. But I think I got this for like 26 bucks. I played it dozens of times now. It is definitely one of my favorite games of all time. It's just a fantastic solo experience. If you like abstract games, it's just one I would highly recommend. It's just so good. 
And so now we're moving on to a game that I got on a whim. And I think this is one of those games where I got it on, a, you know, to fill out my uh, free shipping on a shopping cart. And that's Shinkansen Zero K. Now, I knew nothing about this game when I put it in my cart. I just, I read the description. I saw that it was one to four players. And I was like, all right, I'll give this shot. And so I picked it up. Oh my goodness, this game is so good. Uh, I have had so much fun with this game. Of course, it is a train theme again, but it has really interesting action selection and you're competing for areas on the board. The AI system works really well. It's car driven AI. It's fantastic to use. I love it. These are the designers behind uh, Red Cathedral. Now, I actually haven't played Red Cathedral, but uh, you know, Red Cathedral is one of those popular games by Devere. And this game actually, you know, by its size and by its content and everything, it feels like a Devere game. <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of content in there. There's a lot of replayability. It's just a fantastic game. The the components, the wooden components, are a little on the small side, like they slip out of my hands. But uh, that's just a minor complaint. <laughs> Other than that, you know, it really looks good on the table. It takes up a small footprint. It's just a lot of fun to play. I, I really enjoy it. So Shinkansen 0K, that's my number seven. And then we're moving on to number six. And this is another game that I got at clearance at my local game store. And that is Wendaki. Now, Wendaki is a kind of like a mishmash of a whole bunch of mechanisms. There's uh, area control, there's resource management, there's set collection, there's all sorts of things. And then there's like the scoring track, which is really cool. And the scoring track, there's actually four scoring tracks, two on each side. And so you're gonna score based off of your lowest scores on each of those tracks. And so it's really interesting. So you have to kind of balance your progression on each of the four scoring tracks, which means you have to really balance how you do everything in the game. And on top of that, it has an excellent action selection. So you have this grid of tiles. It's a three by three grid, and you're gonna choose you know, which row or column to activate. And then after you activate those actions, you're gonna flip those tiles over. And then later on, it allows you to do a different action that helps you progress in the game. It, it's just a fantastic game. And I think I picked it up for 20 bucks. I love it. It plays well at all player counts because the board adjusts to all player counts. It's just really good. I, I can't recommend this enough. And that's Windaki. Oh, and I do want to say one other thing about Windaki. The AI is really interesting. See, the AI, when it starts out, it has a set score that you're to beat, but it can progress along that score little by little. So it gives you an idea of where you need to compete for that score, but you don't know exactly how it's gonna end up. And I really like that. So it's a great way of doing the AI. It's another card driven AI. So you're gonna be doing the actions on the cards and that sort of thing. It's really fantastic. All right, so moving on to number five, and this is a game that I've talked about a lot in the last year because it really surprised me by how much I enjoyed it. I bought this game thinking I wouldn't enjoy it. I only bought it to make a tutorial because I thought you would enjoy it. And so here we have Wild Tiled West. A Wild Tile West is a Polyonimo tile laying game where you're drafting tiles from a board. You know, one thing I didn't think I'd like about it is the fact that you roll dice and those dice determine which tiles you can choose from on the board. But it actually works out really well because you can mitigate it slightly. And on top of that, it just provides an added layer to the puzzle. It doesn't really lock you out of doing anything. It just changes the way you're gonna approach each different area. And uh, yeah, I love it. And the fact that they have a solo campaign on the Dire Wolf app it's just a fantastic addition to this game. And it has become one of my favorite, if not my favorite Polyonimo style game. And that surprised me. Like I said, I didn't expect to enjoy it. I expected to, you know, make a video for it and then put it on my cell pile. But instead it is remaining in my collection and it is one of the best games I played last year. So I highly recommend Wild Tile West if you like Polyonimo style tile laying games. This is a fantastic addition to that genre, and I just absolutely love it. All right, if you know me, I'm a huge fan of Uwe Rosenberg, and I've got most of his games, but one I waited on buying for a long time was Hallertau. Hallertau is this game, uh, it's a really, I don't even know how to explain it. It's a really interesting game. It's a farming type game as you're, you know, managing resources and that sort of thing. It has really cool action selection with these action cubes and stuff. But the, the really interesting thing about this is you're moving this house on your land as you, you know, clear rubble on the land and you're moving this house. And as the, the further you move it, the more you score at the end of the game. 
and it looks really gimmicky and that's kind of why I avoided it because I was like that's just a weird looking gimmick but when I played this game I was so surprised by how much I enjoyed this game this game is far better than I expected it to be. It really is. And on top of that, it might be one of my favorite Uwe Rosenberg games. It might be like, it's definitely in the top three. I don't know where it stands against, you know, Newsfjord or Ronnie and Burger Canal, but this game is so good. Now it is, you know, on the heavier side, so do bear in that in mind, but I don't think it's super heavy. It is one of his expert level games. But, you know, I would say it's more medium heavy than anything. And it's just a fantastic game. It is a beat your own score solo mode, just like most of his games. So do keep that in mind. But I, I love it. I, I was so surprised by it and so glad I picked it up. It is on the expensive side, though. So you're looking at at least $65, I think. And that, that is high on the expensive side. But yeah, I don't know. It, it's a fantastic game. I, I do hope they expand it, too. I, I hope they add more decks to it and stuff like that. Uh, that would be great, but I, at this point, I don't think it will because I don't think it was widely received as others, and that's unfortunate because I really think this is one of his best games. All right, for the next three, I really had difficulty deciding which of these three would be on top because they are so close in how much they exceeded my expectations. They are all just fantastic games, and, and I really didn't expect them to be. I thought they would be okay. I thought I would enjoy them. I just didn't think I would enjoy them that much. On top of that, I didn't think that they would end up as some of my favorite games of all time, reaching the top 20 on all three of these games. These games are that good. I think they're some of the best games. I think every solo gamer should own them. And so we're going to start off with number three. Now, number three is actually a video game. It started out as a video game, and then it became a solo game, a solo board game. Came out last year, and I avoided it because I have a lot of tile laying games. And I was thinking, you know what? It looks okay. I didn't think I needed it. And then I picked it up. I, I used it as, a, you know, a way to get free shipping. I'm like, all right, I'm going to finally pick it up because I've heard so many good things about that. And that is Dorf Romantic. Now, Dorf Romantic is a straight-up tile laying game, all right? You're going to be revealing tiles, you know, one at a time. But the thing about this game is you start out with three tasks, and you always have three tasks on the board. And what tasks are is they need to be grouped up in, in an area matching the task. So if you have the yellow tasks, you need to have a group of fields that match the number on that task. And when you reach that level, then you'll gain that task tile, and you're going to score points based off of that. Now, if you exceed that level, you're going to lose that task. And so you have this interesting puzzle of trying to, you know, position things in the right way. You have a whole stack of task tiles that come out. So every time you complete a task, a new task comes out. And so there's just a lot of strategy to this game, a lot more than I expected it to. But on top of that, there's this fantastic campaign. See, as you go, as you score at the end of the game, you're going to compare your score to a chart, and it's going to tell you how many skill points or experience points or whatever points you want to call them, progression points maybe, you're going to mark points on this campaign map. And as you move up this map, you're going to unlock new tokens and new tiles. And on top of that, there are achievements. These achievement cards that require you to do certain things, like score a certain amount or make certain uh, you know, size fields or do different things like that. And so as you complete those achievements, you unlock even more tiles. And these tiles help you score even more. And so you progressively get better at the game, but then the, the progressively the goalposts get shifted. And so, you know, early on in the game, you have to score like 150 points. And then later on, it's 300 points. And then later on, it's gonna be 400 points. There's a lot going on in this game. And you progress as you go, and it's just a fantastic experience. There's these boxes that you open up, and you find you know new tiles and new achievements and new goodies in there. Just so many great things about this game. I just absolutely love it. It's just such a great game. I highly recommend it. I think I only paid like, I don't know, 26, 30 bucks or something like that. And I've played it 10 times right now, and it's just such a great experience. So I highly recommend Dorf Romantic. I think it, it deserves to be on the essential solo gamers list. This is just one of those great games. 
All right, so we're moving on to number two. Now, number two just came out. You see, here's the thing. I actually had bought a lot of Tableau Builder games, and I enjoy Tableau Builder games, all right? I enjoy Empires of the North. I enjoy 51st State. But I bought some that I didn't enjoy, like Earth. You know, I thought it was okay. I ended up selling it. I have Raising Robots, which is on my sell pile because I didn't enjoy that one so much. And so while I wanted to try this one out, I was hesitant about it, didn't have any high expectations. In fact, I expected to not enjoy this game. And so that is Wormspan. Now Wormspan is the latest from Stonemaier Games. And Wormspan is designed by Connie Vogelman who did Apiary behind me. And she has like this really interesting way of providing these combo-tastic opportunities of giving you abilities and cards and stuff that seem to break the game. Like, you always ask yourself, you're like, wait, I can do that? If I play this card, I get to do that? Like, it has all these opportunities. So I love the fact that she puts that in her designs. And now, Wormspan is a spiritual successor to Wingspan. There are notable differences. I have since played Wingspan on uh, BGA. And I enjoyed Wingspan, but I definitely enjoyed this one more. This is just such a fantastic solo experience. Now, on top of all of that that I'm saying here, I think this is one of the best Automas from the Automa factory. See, they provided two different kinds of Automas. They provided one Automa to simulate the normal Wormspan experience, which has very little interaction in the game. But then they provided the Ravel Automa mode, which does provide more interaction and more ways to, you know, affect the AI. And I absolutely appreciate the fact that they did that. So bravo to you, Automa Factory, for doing what you did with that. It's such a great game. And I was so surprised by how much I enjoyed this game. I played it multiplayer, I played it solo, I played it a dozen times so far. This game is gonna be on the best games of 2024, I guarantee it. It's that good, I think it's one of the best games of my collection. Definitely made it to the top 20. And so yeah, I highly recommend Wormspan. There's just so many things, great things I can say about this game. It's just a fantastic experience. All right, we are finally down to my number one game that exceeded my expectations. And this game is also my number one favorite worker placement game. This game it surprises me even to this day. And I just absolutely love bringing this game out. I love everything about it. And so the number one game that exceeded my expectations is Consumption, Food, and Choices. Now, Consumption, Food, and Choices is designed by Karen Nabla, and it is just this fantastic game that actually teaches you about nutrition, all right? So it's teaching you about balancing your diet and, uh, you know, balancing what you consume with exercise and that sort of thing. It's fantastic. There's so many great things going on with this game. Now, the way the game plays is a uh, beat your own score solo mode, but I don't play it that way. See, the way I play it is I play it that I have to balance my diet according to the diet that I've chosen for the game. And there's multiple diets that you can choose. So it's a player board that tells you how you're going to score based off of how you consume and how you exercise. Now, the base game rules say to use the cleanse board, which means you have nothing in your body at the end of the game. Well, let me kind of explain how this game goes. See, what you're gonna be doing is you're going to be gaining resources, gaining, you know, food items, and then you're gonna use those food items to cook recipes and consume those items into your body. So you take those food tokens and you slot them into your body. And as you slot them in, they're gonna either gain you or lose you points at the end of the game. And so you have to balance how much you gain. So certain food choices will be more beneficial to you, like water is more beneficial to you than you know red meats and stuff like that. So you have to balance how you include those items into your body. There are a, like a dozen different kinds of items too. There, you know, there's grains, there's vegetables, there's oils, there's dairy, there's chicken, there's fish, there's wine, there's all sorts of things. And then on top of that, you're gonna be choosing to do exercises and exercises help remove those tokens from your body. So as you do exercises, you're gonna burn off the oils and fats or you know red meats or other kinds of resources. Sometimes it, it just lets you choose which resources. There's so many great things going on with this game. It plays right into the theme so well. It is the most thematic worker placement game in my collection other than maybe Pursuit of Happiness. It is so thematic. It is done so well. 
There's so many great things. It's a 10 out of 10 game for me. I love this game. There's nothing I dislike about this game. It's just that good. And I highly recommend it. This should be in every solo gamer's collection. It's so just amazing. I, I can't tell you how amazing this game is. It's just such a great game. And the fact is, is that like when I bought it, I had seen one of my friends post about it and so I, I picked it up because I thought, you know what, I love worker placement games and it seems like an interesting theme, and, but I just didn't expect to enjoy it that much. It exceeded my expectations so much that it propelled itself to my top 10 list. It's my number one favorite worker placement game of all time and it's just a fantastic game. And so there you have it. That was my top 10 list of games that exceeded my expectations. You have to let me know in the comments below what you thought of this list, but also let me know what games exceeded your expectations. Perhaps there are games out there that I don't even have that might exceed my expectations as well, and I'd love to check them out, so let me know. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here, and I thank you to my Patreons for supporting this channel, and I thank you for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.